morning. This is the service for August 2nd. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Loving God, when our path becomes difficult, we do not always turn to you. We look for an easy way out. We escape an avoidance and addiction. We forget your promises and seek what does not satisfy. Forgive us and bring us back into the strength of your spirit. Amen. God is generous, loving, and forgiving. Hear and believe that your sins are washed away and that new life is yours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. All wise God, you long for us to look upon the world through the loving eyes of your spirit. Help us to see as you do, giving ourselves where we are needed. For the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen.
not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in you we might become the righteousness of God. My sermon this morning is titled, Walk by Sight, or Walk by Faith, <laughs> not Sight, to go with our second Corinthians reading. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, gives us a hard task. From now on, we regard no one from a human or worldly point of view, he says. That doesn't make sense at first blush, because we are humans who live in this world. Our vision is 2020 at best, and even then our vision is always tied to a particular perspective, one in which we are familiar. Our unique human eyes, our unique human situation so influences the way we look at the world, it affects what we even for example, there are a pair of boots at my house, and Jacob, who is a male, calls them purple. I know that they're brown. Now, who is right? A silly example. However, you know how it describes our political landscape. We are so stuck in regarding people from a human point of view, our human point of view, and maybe those of our friends. And it's affecting the very culture of our country, where we are losing the art of civil discourse. The scripture offers us, as Christians, a way back. Because it asks us to step back and see from afar. It asks us to know what God knows, or at least imagine it, that everyone is coming from somewhere. Even the person we disagree with the most vehemently has a backstory. There is a show on Netflix. It's a makeover show. Basically, five stylish men take on the task of helping some not so stylish men, <laughs> helping them figure out how to dress a little neater, how to have a little more culture in general, and transform their sometimes abysmal bachelor pads into homes fit for grown men. It totally panders to stereotypes in some ways. On the other hand, it is opening up conversation. Now in the third episode of the season, the man being made over is in his mid-thirties, a NASCAR-loving Georgia police officer. The person spending one of the days with him to help him with clothes is a gay African-American man from an urban area <laughs> who I am 99% sure doesn't look the same way. However, they get to talking on this long car ride to and from Atlanta. At first, the interaction is very awkward. The gap between seems so wide and there's obvious tension in the car. But then they begin to realize they like some of the same music in high school. That they grew up in homes with similar parenting and, and more. Lots of things. They begin to share their stories with one another. And once that foundation was laid, their honest and vulnerable feelings about Black Lives, Blue Lives Matter movements began to surface. By the end of the whole episode, the highlight for both of them was the entire experience, uh, that entire experience was that car ride conversation and some very fabulously skinny jeans that they got from the Georgia police officer to wear. From now on, we regard a no one from a human or worldly point of view, Paul says. Martin Luther takes it a little further. With his explanation to the Eighth Commandment, it reads, 
that not only should we not bear false witness against our neighbor, but we are to put the best possible construction on anything and everything they do. Remember that from confirmation? This is not easy stuff. This is no thin soup. It speaks to our real experience living in this country. How we, as Christians, address the real hurts, prejudices, privileges, and injustice around us and how it matters. The good news is we don't do it alone. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. There's something mysterious and odd about the Christian religion. First and foremost, it's not a religious system, but an experience and relationship with a person, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ changes everything. What he did then, connecting the seemingly unconnectable, you know, the fishermen, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, and the Pharisees. He had the power to do then, and he has the power to do now. And how's he going to do that? Well, he's going to do it through you and I. Because of Jesus, I am a child of God. Because of Jesus, you are a child of God. And that makes us siblings. Like it or not, no matter where we grew up or what our backstory, we share the same divine DNA and the same divine parent is working so hard to work through each of us. Giving us a job in our community and among our nation, and it is specific. Yes, to love. Yes, to serve. But here's a more pointed task. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Because of what God and Jesus has done for us, because our value lies with God and does not depend upon what we earn, rather in money or respect, we can risk being fools for Christ and risk reaching out. We can pray again and again to have the eyes of God as we look upon our neighbors and our nation and pray for the courage to act in the ways that Christ is asking us to do. To get our brave on, so to speak, because everyone has a backstory, and that's neither an asset or a liability. Our story is just that, our story. When we dare to listen to others, that's where we can see that our stories really are completely intertwined. I have a challenge for you this week. I want you to practice your God eyes, practice reconciliation, I want you to pray the news. Each day from the next week, here's your assignment, and it's threefold. When you hear a news story, ask, where is God in this? What here would make Christ's heart sad? Or, where is Christ's spirit at work? Number two. Now find that same story on a different news media source, one that you wouldn't normally listen to. Listen to a different perspective on the very same event. Ask the same questions that I ask you in number one. Also, instead of getting frustrated or even angry about why the story was reported so differently, I encourage you to get uh, curious. Why was the story? reported so differently. What's the backstory going on here? And number three, pray. For eyes to see the event as God does. Pray. To let Christ help you find compassion and courage. Pray the news this week. What if we all did this? An honest humility. Not searching to confirm our own ideas or beliefs, but to listen for Christ within us. Would it transform our nation? The kingdom of God is ever here and not yet. We won't by our own efforts ever establish heaven here. But with Christ, we can live out our job as peacemakers and reconcilers in our own very small corner of the world. Amen.
with God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. You have given us the ministry of reconciliation, O oh God, that your children might know and live with your unifying spirit. Help us to let go of past preoccupations, grudges, and insults, and move forward in renewed relationships. Be present with those who live in places where conflict and disease dominate the landscape. Protect children, unite families, and grant safe refuge for all who need it. In Christ, all is made new. Bless the work of those who find ways of cleaning up a polluted planet and preserving the life which depends upon it. May we find our own restoration in caring for all who have made, all you have made. We sometimes become preoccupied by the complaints of our physical bodies and blind to the world outside of ourselves. Show us a better way of caring for these temporary temples, nourishing and using them in ways which honor you and maintain our health. Bless all those who struggle with particular challenges. We grieve those who are no longer with us, although we know they are safe and loved in your eternal home. Keep us united in spirit until that day when we shall see their faces again in your heavenly kingdom. We trust in your faithfulness, O God, to both hear our prayers and respond to them in the way which serve us and your world the best. We pray for all these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the prayer.